Tuna pies are really popular in the Philippines, especially when Jollibee releases it, which is our national uh, fast food chain, and their tuna pie is absolutely delicious. It's a deep fried pastry that's filled with a tuna mix. But today, I'm possibly gonna show you something that could be better. Let's find out. Most of the time, the shape you're gonna find is kind of like a, a long log shape, I guess I'm gonna call it. Um, it's definitely not baked, it's deep fried. It has a couple of things that make it really good. There are bubbles on the dough, which means the dough is kind of quite light and crispy and airy at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, and then the tuna filling is very kind of, I guess, basic. It's usually probably a mix of cream and mayo and eggs um, and just canned tuna. What I am gonna do differently this time though is I went to a, a little pastry shop in Bulacan in the Philippines um, where they did a empanada de calisquis. Um, it is something that's absolutely beautiful. It looks like flaky and buttery. Um, and it was the first time I had empanada like that and it was probably the best empanada I've had in my life texturally. Um, and I did a bit of research and I found out that, you know, you have actually versions of this um, in Malaysia called the curry puff, which is quite popular as well. Similar shape, except the one in Bulacan had crazy amount of layers, which I don't think I'll be able to show you today. But I am going to use that as my inspiration for what we're doing today. This program is rated NAR, not an authentic recipe. It may contain dishes that look like traditional recipes, but only take inspiration from them, never trying to actually be them. Please proceed with caution. So the first thing we need to do is create two different doughs. An oil-based dough, which will be tender, and the flakier dough, which should crisp up nicely. The spiraling of these two is what's gonna give this empanada a really cool, kind of like flaky, ridged texture. For the water dough, mix together 250 grams of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of sugar, and a half teaspoon of salt. We're then gonna crumble in about 50 grams of cold lard, duck fat, or butter. The idea here is to try and not melt the fat, so it's really important to just use your fingertips to incorporate it. You want this to feel like wet sand. After that, you can add in half a teaspoon of vinegar and 120 mils of water, and mix that until you can form a shape and then transfer that to a floured surface. If using duck fat like I am, understand that this is a little more liquid than lard or butter, so adjust by adding a little more flour if needed. Knead this for five minutes, the result you're looking for should be nice and smooth. Cover and keep in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. For the oil dough, same process, simply mix 200 grams of all-purpose flour with 100 grams of lard, butter, or duck fat. You'll see that this dough is much more sticky, which is completely normal, but you should still be able to form it into a ball. So adjust with flour where needed. Again, different flours have different absorption rates. Um, so depending on the brands you're using, it's really more important to do this by feel than have exact measurements unless we're using the exact same brands. Cover and keep in the fridge for 30 minutes. For the tuna mix, first off, you really need to use a brand that you'd like um, and make sure that the tuna is kept in oil. Discard most of the oil and then flake it into a bowl. For the vegetables, we're just gonna prep some carrots, onions, celery, and potatoes. Make sure to peel and clean everything, especially the celery, because you don't want that kind of like stringy texture that they sometimes have. Get a pan hot on medium heat, throw in some butter, lots of butter, and fry off your onions and celery for three minutes before adding in your carrots and your potatoes. Everything here is cut more or less in a similar size, so it should cook really quickly. All we're looking to do here is one, cook it to the point where it's almost cooked through and then develop flavor. Once they've released most of their water and have developed some color, you can add in your tuna. At this point, you can taste and then season with salt, pepper, some mayonnaise, and some cream. For an extra punch, I'm also gonna grate in some cheddar cheese. Mix everything and let this cool down completely.
Flour your work surface and get your water dough out and roll it into a large flat circle. Then take your oil dough ball and put it right in the middle. Wrap it up like a tight present and let this rest for 30 minutes in the fridge. Okay, before I show you what this dough can do, I'd like to thank the sponsors of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with absolutely anything you want to learn for people who are creative and curious. If you're passionate about something, it is really the place to delve into it further and possibly get better at it. Skillshare really just offers membership with a purpose um, and it allows you to grow at your own pace and learn from other fellow creatives, which is always really great. From photography to videography to styling, they have you absolutely covered. That's one of the reasons I've been taking the class Filmmaking from Home by Penny Lane. Um, so what she does is absolutely amazing. She uses existing footage that's out there um, and is able to create a story from that. And I love the idea of being able to create something new from a constraint. And the constraint being the footage, which in video is everything. Another great thing is that there are premium classes as well as there are no ads on the platform and all of this and everything that I just talked about for less than 10 US dollars a month if you get the annual membership. It's a great deal. The first 1,000, hurry up, the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link below in the description box will get two months for free of the premium membership. So right now, do that. Click that, open it in another window because we're about to finish this recipe and we're gonna figure out if this dough actually worked out. Take it back out and squash it down. Start rolling it evenly until you get a large rectangle as thin as you can get it. Roll it onto itself as thinly as possible. The thinner it is, honestly, the more ridges you will get. Roll it into a cylinder and then cut that into two inch segments. This basically should look like the trunk of a tree. See? Flatten each piece and roll it out into a circle. For those that you're not gonna be using yet, make sure to keep them covered and in the fridge uh, to prevent them from getting too soft or from drying out. We want to get this quite thin and then place your tuna mix inside, pinch the sides and crimp it in whatever form or shape you want. Heat up some vegetable oil to about 330 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once hot, go ahead and place in your empanadas. Now these shouldn't be completely submerged, so just spoon the hot oil on top of it. After doing a couple, I realized that you're better off not flipping these since the ridge side is quite delicate. So just keep moving them so that they don't stick to the bottom of the pan and just keep spooning the hot oil until the top cooks as well. Once the oil hits the top, you'll start seeing them open up like a flower, which is pretty cool. Once you've achieved a beautiful golden color, I know it's tough, but let this cool down a little bit. I have no idea if you can basically hear this. Let me, let me get close just for you. It is so dry and flaky, which is exactly how I wanted it to be. You can basically look at, look at this part here. Look at, look at how crunchy that is. I don't even know if that's on focus. There you go. There, look at that. Look at how crunchy and flaky all of that is. I can basically take my fingers and just break it off and it's like powdery, almost like a, like a croissant, which is exactly kind of like the element that we wanted. We wanted that crunchiness, but we also wanted that flakiness, uh, which is really important. So I think all we have to do now is cut into it. Woo! Sexy little crunch. That is gorgeous. Look at that little cross cut for you absolutely full to the brim. Like I said a while ago, really flaky. You can see it here, kind of like how it's like a petal. It just opens up nicely. Mm. It's soft, it's tender. It is so rich. <laughs> like the mayonnaise, or I guess the oil you're frying it in, plus the duck fat and the pastry dough. 
It is really rich, but it is absolutely delicious. I would have maybe like one of these, think about the second one, and then try to convince myself to wait for the next day. So if you guys have made tuna pies at home before and want to try something different, I really recommend that you give this a go.